Brother G, I don't want to hold him. Lord have mercy. See, when you see the Spirit of the Lord move, I told you, God raising up people that man can no longer take the credit for. Jay, I'm going to tell you, everybody in here that watch you grow up and then see you, they saw you out there, but when they see you in here, they ain't going to see the same old thing. For any man that be in Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Walk in. Walk in. Walk in. Oh, my God. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. That's, that's what we're here today to help commemorate and celebrate. This men's day. What a way to celebrate God. Yes. See young men don't mind giving God praise. Yes. Society says that all young black men are either in jail or on the street corners. But I stand before the table today that the devil is a liar. We stand here on today. I had a plan for what I wanted to say on today. I've learned that God said, you will do it my way. And I've learned that listening to God keep me out of trouble. Amen. And I ain't worried about being in trouble with y'all. I'm talking about him. Amen. So if you will go with me to the book of John, the 19th chapter, beginning at verse number 16. John chapter number 19, beginning at verse number 16. We did a lot of talking on yesterday about what the man is supposed to be and how he's supposed to be. Went through all of the scriptures of the man and Psalms 1 and everything about the man and me. I feel you came from Ecclesiastes chapter 13 verse 18 and our theme was it's time to man up but as I was praying and seeking God on what to do on today he said they don't know how to be a man until they come in contact with the man John chapter 19. You find that you may signify by saying amen. amen. Beginning at verse 16. You know how I feel about it. Standing don't add nothing to the word, but the word has stood up for God so many times. And it's the grace of the God that we stand for the reading of his holy word. John chapter 16, verse 19. Now I'm going to read from the American Standard Bible today because I want this to be made plain. You may have the King James Bibles or whatever you read, but I'm going to read it from the American Standard Bible because I want it to be made plain. John chapter 19, beginning at verse 16 says, Then he handed him over to be crucified. The crucifixion, the crucifixion then took Jesus away, carrying the cross by himself. He went out to what is a place called Skull Hill, which the Hebrew called Gotham. There they crucified him, two others with him, one on each side, with Jesus in the middle. God's word for God's people for the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come now, God, just to say thank you. 
Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Now, God, as we stand behind this sacred desk, dip us down in your will of wisdom. Bring us up with preaching power and light. That we may preach your word. That some may cry, and I hear, I hear. What must I do to be saved? Hide me, hide behind that rugged cross. May men don't see me, but the God that lives in me. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Carrying the cross by himself. He went out to a place that was called Skull Hill, which the Hebrews called Galilee. There, they crucified him. Two others with him. One on each side with Jesus in the middle. And I want to talk to you today, encourage you today, and give you some information today about the man in the middle. The man in the middle. Now, we, we this is nationally known Black History Month and we went through and had our Black History here this month and we often do it this time and it's funny because I don't understand why it's only doing Black History Month that these names seem to ring a bell. Dr. Martin Luther King, Frederick Douglass, Thurgood Marshall, all these black pioneers that did so much for the African American community. And these were great men. Great men. But they had to know somebody greater to be able to fix what they had to fix. We've had some politically correct great men, Reverend Al Sharpton and Reverend Jesse Jackson, and all these guys that come around from time to time and our community is in need and stuff like that. These are Great men, great men, but they still had to know somebody of a higher power that'll keep them and carry them through what they had to go through. Amen. Now, undoubtedly, in your life, you have come in contact with some great men in your life. Maybe it be your grandfather, your great grandfather, your father, or uncle, or somebody that has, God has put in your pathway that you idolize as a great person, a great man, or somebody, a male figure. But I want to introduce you today because I find out that even though this is rare, a lot of great men are get together and they have great conversations. But the conversation is very rarely about the man in the middle. All right. All right. We talk about everything else we want to talk about. But it's very rare when you find men sitting around talking about this man named Jesus. But in order, I found out that in order for us to be the man that God called us to be, we got to come in contact with the man. Amen. Because we don't know it's like it's like a baby growing up as a little boy. If you don't ever see a man, you don't know how to be a man. Can I get a witness in here? So it's just like us. If we don't know the man, then we don't know how to be the man. Amen. In, 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 in this time that we're living in, and, and it is sad because if you pay attention to wherever we start in scripture, God always dealt with man. From the, from the Old Testament of Melchizedek, it always dealt with the son and the man. Can I get a witness again? And, 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 and it seems like the devil knew what God had planned for man all along. Because from the beginning of time, he always attacked man. Man is supposed to be the head. Well, you know what they tell us in the military, if you kill the head, the body will fall. Can I get a witness again? So if you pay attention that even during slavery, they always wanted to break the man. Can I get a witness again? 
Because if they broke the man, they felt that everybody else would fall. When they wanted to get rid of us, they would take the man out of the house and send him over to the front line and leave the women there by themselves. That way they can capture the family and keep the family tree how they want it. Because they took away the man. Can I get a witness in here? But I want to talk to you a day about the man in the middle. Can I get a witness in here? This man, the man of all men. I wonder, can I take some time and really give you an introduction to this man? He hails from a little town called Bethlehem. Can I get a witness in here? Bible said he was born of a virgin named Mary a father named Joseph. Can I get a witness in here? Said he was born on a silent night. Can I get a witness in here? And at the, the hearing of his birth, he was already endangered because King Herod had already sent his henchmen to find this baby, to kill this baby before this baby even got started on his journey. That just tell you how powerful this man is. Can I get a witness in here? I don't know if you know who I'm talking about, but I'm talking about the man in the middle. Can I get a witness in here? Here it is, here it is, when he was 13 years old, he performed his first miracle when he was at a wedding, and the wedding, the water ran, the way the wine ran out, and he turned water into wine. Can I get a witness in here? I wonder if you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the man in the middle. The Bible said that as he walked this earth for 33 years, he, he healed the sick, and he fed the hungry, and he had no of a person. He treated everyone the same. He loved everybody like it was supposed to be loved. Even the ones that betrayed him, he still had mercy. No, I'm, talking to you. I'm talking about the man in the middle. And see, in order for us to be the men that we're supposed to be, because I understand just like I said, when we grow up, we learn things. And sometimes we don't learn about this man. We learn about the men that we see. And oftentimes the men that we see ain't lined up with this man. So we pick up some habits along the way that may keep us from getting close to this man. See, we gotta learn how to love the ones that talk about us. Can I get a witness in here? Y'all are gonna talk about it here. I believe it's somewhere in songs that says, pray for them that despitefully misuse you. Y'all are gonna talk to me in here. In order for you to be the man that God called you to be, you gotta be able to look over some stuff. You gotta be able to bypass some stuff. You gotta be able to see for God I live and for God I die. I'm standing on the promises of the Lord. Y'all are gonna talk to me in here. In order for us to be the men that God called us to be, to stand up to be, to call us to be, there's a, there's a certain standard that comes into play. Right. Can I get a witness in here? You got to give your life totally unto him. Can I get a witness in here? Give your life totally unto him. And I understand as we grow up, we see things that we want. And see things that we want to do. And see things that other people have that we feel that we should have that we want. But I want to just encourage you, you don't know what those people went through to get what they got. Can I get a witness in here? There were some hard times that you didn't see. There was some the trouble that they had that you didn't know about. There were some things that they went through that you had no idea, but they knew about the man in the middle. <laughs> the man in the middle. See, when you come in contact with this man, I promise you, you'll never be the same. You really thought you were a man when you were out there. But I want you to know you ain't really a man until you come in contact with the man. Can I get a witness in here? Then you know how to stand when the wind blows. Said, I'm standing by the will of the walls. Like a tree, I shall not be moved. Can I get a witness in here? I'm talking about uh, the man uh, in the middle. Uh, I ain't gonna be before you long, uh, but before I take my seat, uh, I told you I wanted to keep it simple because I didn't want it to go over your head. Uh, and you know, as we're growing up, uh, the most simple and first thing that we learn uh, is our A, B, 
ABCs. Can I get a witness in here? Be good, teacher. You know what I'm talking about. Mama says that you done taught the ABCs before. Can I tell you about this man? But I want you to know there's only one man that can fit the description of every letter in the alphabet. Can I tell you who I'm talking about? I'm talking about the man in the middle. He's A because he's Alpha and Omega. He's B because he's the bright and morning star. Chief cornerstone. He's deep because he's the day spring of Israel. He's deep because he's the everlasting father. He's F because he's the first fruits of the resurrection. He's G because he's the giver of eternal life. He's H because he's our hope and he's our horn of salvation.
pay attention to some of the season saints. They know what it takes to get through with the Lord on your side. We're going to fix some things that see you got to be a firm believer that God knew exactly what he was doing. The people that he placed in slavery he placed them there because he knew he was still strong enough to handle it. All right. All right. He placed them and they went through that because they knew. See if you pay attention after everything all your ancestors and God have done for you and some of you still can come in here and don't give him no praise. So God thought said, I got to put some people in this era that will praise me in spite of what they're going through. Because truth be told, if some of us was in that area, we'd have been dead in the hell a long time ago. Because you couldn't be. You can't stand the little bit you're going through now with all the freedoms you got. You still can't praise God. Just imagine what they went through. But yet still, they risk their life to go someplace on Sunday morning and tell God, thank you. I may be enslaved, but Lord, I thank you. I may have to watch out for master, but Lord, I thank you. And he who's sitting here with all the freedom you got, and you can't even open your mouth and get God no Peter Robinson was exactly right. Not only do we forget, but we are very ungrateful. Very ungrateful. Not only to our forefathers, but to the man in the middle that died for you. That took something, that went back and got something for you that you didn't even know you had. So ungrateful. So ungrateful that you would come in here and just sit and look after everything he's done for you. If he ain't done nothing for you, I'm pretty sure he done something for your children. He done something for your grandchildren. You got something to give God praise for. Consider your position with the man in the middle. Know him without a shadow of a doubt. See, here's how you want to look at it. You know how when we call those names Dr. Martin Luther King, Frederick Douglass, and all the pioneers and all these people, you know how we recognize those names for what they have done. And you know how you want to be recognized when, when, when you are stretched out across this island. You want to have people to have good things to say about you. You want to be recognized. Well, I don't know about you, but I want God to recognize me. I want him to be familiar with me before he called me up to him. Can I get a witness in here? And I don't want him to say, look, like I'm no, I want him to say, that's my child. Look at my son on his way up back to me. I want him to be able to recognize me. God can't recognize you if you don't spend no time with him. Check your position. With the man in the middle. I promise you, if you get close enough to him, start following him, I guarantee you, you'll be a different person here on Sunday morning. And not just on Sunday morning, because you shouldn't have to wait for Sunday to praise God. You can praise God every place you go, everywhere you are. My wife will tell you, every time I'll be sitting in the living room, just waving my hands. 
listening to the music that God, because God has been good to me. And I dare not cheat him on what I owe him. Because I owe him everything. Everything. Might not be where I want to be. Might can't do the things that I used to do, but I thank God that I'm able to do what I can do. I thank you. I thank you. Me and my wife got five children. And I'm going to be honest, none of them don't care nothing about church. But I keep praying for them. That's all I can do. They can go any place else they want to go. Time for Sunday morning, they got every excuse in the world. But like I tell you, I can only tell you about God, but you got to die for your sin. See, some preachers like to tell everybody else what the people don't talk to their own children. I ain't got no shame in mind. I'll tell you about mine. I love them to death. If you done heard me say this on a million kids, and I ain't going to hell for them. And they know that. But that's what the devil wants. He wants division in families. He wants to take the children. Because he knows with the children ain't no future. But we got to grab a hold of our children. Keep praying for them. Now listen, never mind don't live in my house. We like the old days, you stay in the house and not lose, but they don't. You know, they, don't, they got their own, so they're they smart. They got their own place. Yes. But if they live under your roof, and you feed them, and you clothe them, and you provide for them, you go where I tell you to go. I don't care how old you are. You don't want nothing to get your own place. See, that has stopped. Children run in the house now. That's why they out there running, doing what they're doing. That's why the schools are in the shape they in. You got more schools shooting and everything going on. And the parent do how you don't know your child got a gun in your house? I remember one time I called myself bad closing my door. My daddy took the door off the hinges. You don't close no doors in here. When you got going on in there, you got to close the door. You ain't got nothing, ain't nobody never seen you before. I thought it was crazy. <laughs> I'm talking about I need privacy. You know, privacy in my house. <laughs> Amen. But we, listen, I'm a firm believer that we do have to make some changes with time because some things that worked then for for then that won't work now. But I'm also a firm believer that the foundation was for a reason. Some things are the foundation that we need to continue doing to make sure that we get, that we can continue to build on the foundation. Amen. 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 Check your position with the man in the middle. We talk about everything else. Anything we want to talk about. Let's change our conversation. Let's help one another as brothers. By having a conversation about the man in the middle. Amen. 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 Come on, let's get going. Report um, the progress on Sister Barker. She had an asthma attack, and we rescue squad has taken her to the emergency room. But she's doing better. They gave her treatment. At this time, will you all stand?
Come on, give this a little quiet. Yeah. He's about the same. Yes, they did. And I thank God for them because <laughs> we was in here the other night rehearsing and we looked up, it was like 10 o'clock. But no one made one complaint. God is good. See, when you want better, you do better. I challenged him. I said, if we want more in 24, we got to do more in 24. Can I get a witness to you? Amen. 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 But for those of you today that don't know who Jesus is, this opportunity is afforded to you. And then once in a while I get by myself and I tell you what I just said. Mm -hmm.